Okay, so this is, today's video is going to be another photographer's view. Um, this will be the second episode. And yeah, very much looking forward to this. I would like to thank Squarespace for their continued support and sponsoring this channel. So if you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. And without further ado, we are going to start a photographer's view episode two. So in today's episode, I am going to be talking about the beautiful Lake District National Park in the United Kingdom, or the northwest of England in the UK. Uh, the Lake District, it, it's, it's phenomenal, it has everything, it has mountains, it has lakeside photography, rivers, woodland, it really ha ah! <laughs> Did somebody say woodland? <laughs> What are you doing? Come on, move up. Where did you come from? I want to get invo involved in this one now. Is it because I said woodland? Yeah. This is Simon Baxter. I don't know if you know Simon Baxter. He is a landscape photographer and has a YouTube channel and specialises in... Woodland. Woodland. And we've Trees. worked and photographed in the Lake District together a few times. We have, we? yeah. Workshop and for pleasure as well. Okay. <laughs> we let's discuss the Lake District together. Let's review it from a photographer's perspective. Lake District is situated in the northwest of England. It's a national park. Closest airport is Manchester International Airport, and from there you're probably looking at about an hour and a half drive. You know, also get a train to many villages and towns within the Lake District National Park. It's it's beautiful. Now we can't review the entire Lake District in one video. It's too varied. It's too big. Um, so should we just Discuss one area, one area our yep. favourite area. Yep. Or, so or, my, my favourite town to stay is Keswick. Keswick is a beautiful town. It's my favourite town as well. It's the mm -hmm. it's a, it's at the north end of the Lake District and it, it's great. It has everything, pubs, bars, restaurants, cafes, bed and breakfast, accommodation, and it's a great base. It's a great base if you want to explore the Lake District. In particular, if you want to explore the area that we're talking about in this video, which is Borrowdale. Borrowdale, the Borrowdale Valley. Mm. Borrowdale is a valley in the Lake District. It sits south of Keswick and Derwent Water. We will be discussing a few locations in and around this area. Briefly, why is Borrowdale good? Well, I think the, the lakes, the in, lakes general, in general. The lakes yeah. in general, yeah, I think is, is great because it's so much, there's so much variety. It's very compact, so in a relatively small area, You've got the fells, you've got lakes, you've got rivers, you've got woodland, like you've already said. Um, seasons as well. Changes it changes massively in the seasons, seasons. And, the, and the autumn colours are fantastic. Um, obviously you get snow capped fells in the, the winter, hopefully. Um, it has a tendency to get really nice mist in the valleys as yep. well, over the lakes. I think what I like about the lakes is it's, it's incredibly accessible. So like, for example, you've got Scotland where to go from one location to another in Scotland, you can be driving for three hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't, you uh, don't, you don't have to worry in the lakes because... Yeah. Lake District is like Scotland. Yeah! <laughs> Compressed. <laughs> yeah. What are the downside? What do you dislike about the Lake District? I, so, a few in, all, I in all honesty, um, in the height of the summer season, I avoid it. Yeah. It's incredibly busy. So um, basically, if you go to the Lake District in July on a Saturday when there's a good weather forecast, you are not going to be alone. It's no, going to be packed. Not at all. Very unlikely you'll be able to find any free parking. It's it's just packed. <laughs> yeah, can't... and there's, there's, there's barely any laybys. So yeah. you, the, the, it can be a bit frustrating sometimes because you're driving along, you see something amazing happening with the light and the landscape, and you want to stop, you can't but stop. you can't. And by the time you can stop, you're, you're way past. And that's not even anything to do with busy crowds. That's just no, the way the roads the are. Yeah. And that's yeah. the nature of it. And that's because it's a very untouched old place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very, very busy. Car parks will be full, yeah. guest houses will be full, popular trails will be busy. There are places where which are quiet. But not in Borrowdale. But not in Borrowdale. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> um, but but to, but that, that I wouldn't let that deter you from going because it's well worth yeah. spending time with. And in all fairness, if you're in the Lake District in July, you need to be up out and about at 4:30 a.m. when sun when the sun's rising and there's yep. no one about then. So and you can get free parking at some spots if yep. you're there early. Get there early, 
and then that's the best time to be out in nature anyway. Yeah, early morning mitigates any problems from tourists and busy crowded places. So those are the downsides. Basically. And when we busy. were here in October, we didn't see anybody. No, true, we didn't. Um, right, very quickly, what have you what what have you got in Borrowdale Valley? You've got so you've got lakes. Yep. Mountains. Woodland. Woodland. Uh, rivers. Jetties. Bridges. Stone walls. A large town. Large town. Accommodation. Lots, yeah, cafes, lots of amenities. Pubs. Yeah, tons of accommodation. Places to eat. Boat rides. Okay. Rowing boat hire. That's enough. That's enough. You can barge in. in. <laughs> and you can't take over the video name so every single thing, every single thing in <laughs> Borrowdale. The first location we will discuss is Cat Bells, a relatively small fell that shelters the western side of Borrowdale and Derwent Water. Cat Bells is mm. a, the most popular mountain hike um, in the Lake District because it's very, very accessible. It's, um, it offers amazing views and it's relatively, it's easy to navigate. There are a few scrambles. Um, yeah, I mean, it, even though it, it's a small fell and it's 500 meters of ascent. 500 meters, and it should not be underestimated because there are a couple of scrambly bits, and if it's wet, it's, 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 it's dangerous. Mm. It's, it is dangerous, so you, you, yeah, don't yeah, under you, underestimate these places. Even though there's hordes of people going up there, you could there's take lots a fall, of incidences. You? Yeah. you could take a fall on yeah. catwalks. Um, and so at this point, we should throw out a disclaimer saying if you're in the Lake District, even though, relatively speaking, on a worldwide scale, the fells are quite small. Um, you definitely need to take a map, compass, warm clothing, and waterproof yeah. clothing, whatever the weather. Sturdy because, footwear, yeah. Uh, because you, it's very easy to get lost out there. Mm. You know, there are false trails leading on footpaths. The weather closes in, you get zero visibility. Yeah. Be careful. Take GPS, map, compass, warm clothes, dry clothes. Tell people where you're going. Um, from a photographer's standpoint, you probably want to do cat bells at sunrise mm. because not only will it be nice and quiet, you get lovely light as the sun rises um, from yeah. the east. And during our workshop in February, we walked up in the dark, in the snow, and yeah. that was a fantastic experience. And then being at the top for dawn was, was awesome. Yeah, um, uh, from the top of cat bells, there are endless opportunities. If you have a long lens, you can shoot over to the adjacent mountains, you can shoot across the Skiddor, you can shoot down into Manistee Park. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I was there when there was an inversion and uh, the inversion looked fantastic, but when that started to drift and burn off under the morning sunlight, it drifted through Manistee Park, shooting down on that, and that was, that was fantastic. And that was much better than, photographically for me, than looking across yeah. the inverter. Well, last time we were there um, at our workshop in the winter, um, I don't think I took an image with the wide lens. I was long lens all no. the way. Well, I barely took a image because you dropped your I camera. dropped a camera and smashed it up. Yeah. How long does it take you to get up cat bells? If I had to say to you now, on your by your by yourself from the car park to the summit, how long would it take you? Forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes. I would say the same. Yeah. If you're with a group, probably allow an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah. Um, and as tempting as it is to stop and take photographs on the way up, probably best bits the summer, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it just depends how the lights falling. But there's what's great about cat bells as well is that you've just got these lovely views all the way up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, closer to the top is probably better yeah. for sunrise. All right. So we've we've done mountains. Where else can people go and shoot if they are visiting the Lake District, staying in Keswick, and they're exploring Borrowdale? So down the west side of Derwent Water. Yeah. Um, there's the Bowderstone. The Bowderstone. And the Bowder, there's a car park there called the Bowderstone Car Park. It's free if you're a National Trust member. Yeah. If you're not, get your checkbook out, guys. <laughs> yes, it's not cheap. <laughs> yeah, take lots of pound coins. Yeah. Um, I think it cost me six pounds yeah. last time I was there. Yeah. Um, it's a good base, that car park, because you can mm. hike up Kings Howe. Yeah, which, yeah, that's where we went, yeah. Eh, conservatively, I'd say about an hour to the summit. Yep. Yeah. Give or take. It's, um, quite, it's quite steep. Um, and the path's not particularly yeah. well worn. Short and steep. Yeah, but again, views, views over towards Skiddor are lovely with lots of silver birch in the foreground. Yeah, uh, there was water in the trees. mid ground. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, kind of huge vista, very postcard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then you turn around and look uh, south and you've got the Scarfell Range, Great Gable, you've got uh, Seathwaite and that whole valley and we got a great evening there, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and in particular, once you, it's worth getting up there well before sunset because that sort of late afternoon light can sort of yeah. 
get shafts of light coming down and into the Borodale Valley. Not get many people up there. If you if you've got mobility issues, um, if you can't walk very far, you you could probably walk just two or three minutes from the car park and yep, you're in absolutely. a nice area. Mm. You don't have to keep walking for miles and miles. Just mm. 500 yards mm. and there's, that's it. So and on the other side of the river, uh, the River Derwent, which is really nice next to the river itself, yeah. but then you've got Castle Crag. Yeah, Castle Crag is an, it's a nice walk and if you go around the back of it, it feels very remote, very like... Yeah, and the, the, the woodland's really nice to walk through on, yeah, on the way up. And then once you, once you get to the first viewing area on Castle Crag, there's lots of slate where there's all sort of quarry yeah. works and um, bits of big slate standing up yeah. as well. Uh, nice valley views, and you go a little bit higher, and there's uh, you can get the views looking back towards Skid Oregon. Yeah, and again, great for because this is like a photographer's view, and all of this, everything we've talked about in this video, is great because it's diverse. Diverse, works yeah, well, accessed. works well in pretty much all weather. Mm. You know, if it's a glorious day, hike up a mountain, if it's a bit grim, go into the woods. So, what else can we say about Borrowdale and that area in particular? I'd say, you know, what the stuff we've mentioned is just places we like, you can just explore. And there's so much more through there. There's, 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 there's so much more there. Walla Crag, go up to Walla Crag. Yeah, that's fantastic views awesome again. Views over the lake. Uh, quieter than the Cat Bell side. Yeah, uh, if you want to go for a beer, go into Keswick. Loads of nice pubs, restaurants, Good coffee. cafes. Yeah. If you don't want to fork out the high prices for accommodation, you can wild camp. Um, but, you know, strictly speaking, it's illegal, I think. But it's tolerated, but just, if you're going to wild camp, make sure you're high up. So above the last fell wall, make sure you're off the footpath, don't be an idiot. Don't set your camp up early and stay there all day. Just set your camp up at dusk and pack away at dawn. Don't leave any litter, don't be stupid. All that kind of good stuff that you need to practice. Yeah. Yep. Or do what I do and stay in a nice comfy cottage. Yeah, you get to cottage. <laughs> I go camping in a van or in a tent and you get a nice cottage every time. Yeah. And whilst we're talking about the Lake District, I need to do a plug. Do you mind if I do a plug? Go for it. So, um, in the Lake District every year there is a show and it's called the Northern Photography and Video Show. And it's on at the Regged... Regged? Regged? It's on at the Regged Reg Reg Centre. And that is between Penrith and Keswick. Between Penrith and Keswick, and it's a Northern Photography and Video Show. There's loads of inspirational talkers. There's going to be brands there. There's going to be all sorts of good stuff going on. And the beauty of it is, is it's in the heart of the Lake District. So if you want to go and you want to have a weekend away, maybe go on that weekend, which is the 12th and 13th of May. I'm talking. Simon's not talking. No. I'll, maybe next year. Yeah, I'll be busy washing my <laughs> but yeah come on it's gonna be it's gonna be an awesome show and i'm, I'm plugging it because it you know i think i think it's gonna be great yeah and i think it's only like four quid a ticket as well that's um, good so yeah go there during the day photograph in the morning and the evening I couldn't think of a better weekend if i'm honest um so that's it that's pretty much it um i'd like to thank squarespace for their continued support of this channel so if you need a website squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and start a free trial or try a free trial and uh, if uh, if you like free trial and you want to you want to continue with that and give Squarespace your hard-earned money use the off code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase and um, so yeah thank you so much for watching and, and thank you for having me no, you're welcome and until next time bye for now oh, I usually just slam it <laughs>